everyone, you're watching the Esperanza 243. You're watching my book reading project of the Westing Game Part 19. All right, so let's see what happened in Part 18. I believe in Part 18. Um, We got to hear a little background on James Shin Ho. Uh, Jake Wexler decided to give his wife random presents for no reason at all. And Jake and his wife, uh, they took they meet their daughter Angela in the hospital since since she uh, had that third bomb blow in her face on accident. No one was supposed to get hurt, but apparently she did. Not any physical injuries, but you know, just wounds. Eighteen ended with uh, Theo working on a theory, and that's actually where we are. It was past midnight when Theo finished his homework in the dim light of the study lamp. The wind was still howling, and something, a word, a phrase, was still eluding him. He had been studying solutions in chemistry. Solutions. That was it. The solution is simple, the will said. He was sure of it. By changing 4 and V to the numbers 4 and 3, Theo was able to arrange the clues into a formula. Whether or not it was a chemical solution, let alone the Westing solution, was another matter. And I'll have that formula posted across either above me or just, you know, right smack dab in the middle. But four clue letters were left out. I-S-T-O, O-S-I-T, I-T-S-O, O-T-I-S. Otis! He had it. A form formula for an explosive and the name of the murderer. He had to tell Doug. Where g g go again? Shh. Theo smoothed the blankets over his sleepy brother in the next bed struggled into his bathrobe and stumbled over the wheelchair as he tiptoed out of the room. The elevator made too much noise. He used the stairs. The cement was cold. He had forgotten his slippers. Two unmarked doors. Which one? Tap, tap. Tap. A grunting voice, dragging footsteps. Please let it be Doug, not Mr. Ho, or Judge Ford. It was Crow. Clutching a robe about her gaunt frame, her unknotted hair hanging long and limp. She tried to focus her dulled eyes on the shocked face of her visitor. Theo! Theo! The wind! I heard the wind! I knew you would come. Me? Grasping his hand, she pulled him into the maid's apartment between 4C and 4D and shut the door. We are sinners, yet shall we be saved. Let us pray for deliverance, then you must go to your angel and take her away. Theo found himself kneeling on the bare floor next to the praying crow. He must be dreaming. Amen. Chapter 18. The Trackers it was Florin Bombach who braided Turtle's hair now, sometimes three strands, sometimes four, sometimes twined with ribbons, while Turtle read the Wall Street Journal. Listen to this. The newly elected chairman of the board of Westing Paper Products Corporation, Julian R. Eastman, 
announced from London where he is conferring with European management that earnings from all divisions are expected to double in the next quarter. That's nice, Florum Bumbach said, not understanding a word of it. Turtle gave the order of, for the day. Listen carefully. As soon as you get to the broker's office, I want you to sell AMO, sell SEA, and sell MT, and put all the money into WPP, okay? Oh, my! That meant selling every stock mentioned in their clues, buying more shares of Westing Paper products, at a loss of some thousands of dollars. Whatever you say, Alice, you're the smart one. Flora Bobbach's hands were gentle. They never hurried or, or pulled a stray hair. Florm Bumbach loved her, she could tell. I like when you call me Alice. But I better not call you Mrs. Bumbach anymore because of the bomb scare, you know? Calling her Flora would spoil everything. May I call you Mrs. Baba? Why not just Baba? That's exactly what Turtle Alice wanted to hear. Was your daughter Rosalie very smart, Baba? My, no. You're the smartest child I ever met. A real businesswoman. Turtle glowed behind the Wall Street Journal. I bet Rosalie baked bread and patched quilts and dumb stuff like that. The dressmaker's sure fingers fumbled over the red ribbons she was weaving into a four-strand braid. Rosalie was an exceptional child. The friendliest, lovingest. Turtle crumpled the newspaper. Let's go. I'm late for school, and you've got that big trade to make. But I haven't finished tying the ribbons. Never mind. I like them hanging. Turtle felt like kicking somebody, anybody, good and hard. Sandy was not at the door when they left. He was in apartment 4D, neatly writing in his patriotic notebook information gathered on the next air. Bombach. Flora Bombach. Maiden name, Flora Miller. Age 60. Dressmaker. Husband left her years ago, sends no money. She had a retarded daughter, Rosalie, a mongoloid child. Sold bridal shop last year after Rosalie died of pneumonia, age 19. Spends most of her time at the stockbrokers. Westing connection. Made wedding gown for Violet Westing, which she never got to wear. Sandy turned to a fresh page, propped his feet on the judge's desk, and began to read the data supplied by the private investigator on Otis Amber. He laughed so hard he nearly fell off the tilting chair. Haunted by last night's dream, Theo jogged behind his partner halfway to the high school before he uttered a breathless, Stop! Doug Ho stopped. Who lives in the apartment next to yours? Crow, why? Nothing. How come he didn't know that? Because no one ever wonders where a cleaning woman lives, that's why. But he wasn't like that, was he? Still, it must have been a dream. In the dream, the nightmare, Crow had given him a letter. But the only thing he found in his bathrobe this morning was a Westing paper hinky. Hey, wait! Doug had started off again. I figured out our clues. Ammonium nitrate. It's used in fertilizers explosives, and rocket propellants. I knew those clues were a pile of fertilizer, Doug replied, jogging easily. Only one thing mattered, Saturday's big track meet. If he won or came in a fast second, he'd have his pick of athletic scholarships. He didn't need the inheritance. Stand still and listen. Theo grabbed Doug by the shoulders and held him flat-footed to the ground. 
Like it or not, we're partners, and you've got to do your share. Sure, Doug replied. His father was angry, his partner was angry, and a bomber was blowing up Sunset floor, Sunset Towers floor by floor. Some game. What do you want me to do? Follow Otis Amber. Head tilted back, form bum box squirted drops in her eyes, blinked, and stared at the moving tape. And here we go again, flashing across my face this time, because I don't know how to do this, like I said before. Oh, my! Westing Paper Products had jumped four and a quarter. No, four and a half points. Her eyes must be blurry from the medicine. The dressmaker sat on the edge of her chair, biting her fingernails, waiting for WPP to cross the board again. There! WPP! Forty dollars! Oh, my! Oh, my! This morning she had paid thirty-five dollars a share. There it goes again. WPP! Forty and a quarter! Oh my, oh my, oh my! Ooh. After classes, instead of running around the indoor track, Doug Ho jogged out of the gym to the shopping center six blocks away. There was Otis Amber placing two cake boxes in the compartment of his bike. He picked up a package from the butcher shop and pedaled off, unaware of the sweat-suited figure trotting half a block behind him and went into Sunset Towers to make his deliveries. Hi Doug, gonna run the mile under four minutes on Saturday? The doorman asked. Sure hope so. Do me a favor, Sandy. Give a loud whistle when Otis Amber comes out, okay? Chip Tooth Sandy gave such a loud whistle that Otis Amber would have been deafened if the flaps of the aviator, aviator's helmet had not been snug against his ears. <laughs> Leaving his bicycle in the parking lot, Otis Amber boarded a bus. Doug ran the five uphill miles to a house with the placard E.J. Plum, attorney. He ran another three uphill miles after the bus that took the delivery boy to the hospital entrance. Doug sank down in a waiting room, wiped his face on his sweatshirt, and picked up a magazine. Fascinated by the centerfold picture, he almost missed Otis Amber, who dashed out of the hospital as though fleeing for his life. Hiding behind parked cars, Doug followed the delivery boy to another bus, ran four steep miles to a stockbroker's office. How is it that all roads go up uphill? From the, broker, from the broker to the high school, from the high school, downhill at last, back to Sunset Towers. The exhausted track star leaned against the side of the building, thankful he was not a long-distance runner. I gotcha! Otis Amber poked the skinny finger into Doug's ribs. He <laughs> he cackled, handing the startled runner a letter. It's from that lawyer, Plum. Says all the heirs got to be at the Westinghouse this Saturday night. Sign here. With his last ounce of energy, he wrote Doug Ho, Myler, on the receipt, then slid down the wall to a weary squat. Some Myler. His feet were blistered. His muscles sore. He could barely breathe. He might never run another step in his life. On receiving the notice of the Westinghouse meeting, Judge Ford canceled her remaining appointments and hurried home. Time was running out. Sandy, Sandy read to her from his notebook. Amber. Otis Joseph Amber, age 62, delivery boy, 4th grade dropouts, IQ 50, lives in the pace, basement of Green's Grocery, a bachelor, no living relatives. Weston Connection. Delivered letters from E.J. Plum, attorney, both times. I would have guessed Otis, 
I would have guessed Otis had an IQ of minus 10, Sandy said with a smile. Go on to the next heir. Deer, D. Denton Deer, age 25, graduate of UW Medical School, first year intern, plastic surgery, parents live in Racine, not heirs. Weston Connection, engaged to Angela Wexler, C. Wexlers, who looks like Sam Weston's daughter, Violet, who is also engaged to be married, but to a politician, not an intern. That's awful complicated, I know, the doorman apologized, but it's the best I could do. And I am actually going to stop there. In the next video, we'll see what goes on next. Actually, the next video is the one hour special. So we'll see what ha we'll see how much I can read in that one. Alright, this is the Esperanza 2 for 3, signing out.